The Endangered Species Act is meant to protect endangered species. But if you ask a rancher, what'll you do if an endangered wolf shows up on your property? It turns out the answer is often, uh, I'd shoot, shovel, and shut up. You ask why? Well, a wolf will cost a rancher valuable livestock, and when livestock is your livelihood, you do what you have to do to protect yourself. Now, it's not legal to shoot the wolf, which is why the rancher will bury it and shut up about it. Now, this is truly perverse. A law that supposedly protects an endangered animal actually encourages people to kill it. A perverse incentive is one that encourages people to act in a way that's different than we would want them to act. They show up all over the place and often come about because lawmakers don't know or recognize the incentives they are creating when they pass a law. When the Endangered Species Act was passed, legislators focused on what they perceived to be a moral imperative. Let's protect endangered species. I doubt that legislators analyze the negative incentives the act created for property owners who find an endangered species on their land. And it turns out that many property owners today preemptively destroy habitats that would attract certain endangered species. Because if they get the endangered species, government officials will impose land use restrictions, fees, or steep fines. Now compare the incentives created by the Endangered Species Act to those created by a private organization, Ducks Unlimited. The people who give money to Ducks Unlimited do so because they love ducks. And many of them love to hunt ducks. And Ducks Unlimited uses that money to rent, lease, or purchase property where ducks spend their time. Thousands and thousands of acres in Canada and in Mexico. Farmers get paid to use their land in ways that benefit the ducks. And we have many more ducks because it's in the farmer's financial interest to protect them. Unlike wolves, where it's in their financial interest to kill them. Too often, public policies don't actually lead to desirable outcomes. Any policy that gets into place ought to have a more than reasonable chance of achieving its stated goal. So during the policymaking process, not enough attention is given to the potential for perverse incentives. And any public policy that results in perverse incentives and leads to bad outcomes should be rethought. So when we're thinking about passing or promoting legislation, we probably ought not to think about what is the nice thing to do. We ought to think about the incentives being created and how people will react to those incentives.